Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. <laughs> What's up, Shaq Houses? How y'all doing? It's your boy Shaq House here. Hope your week's been going well. Mine's been going. All- <clears throat> Mine's been going all right. Check this out. I know I promised you or hinted at you in the last video that I'd be doing something on Kang the Conqueror in preparation for the Ant Man movie, but right now we're taking a slight detour. It's related to Kang and his other incarnations, but it's going to be a redo of an old video that I did on here back in 2021, explaining a Marvel crossover entitled Time Quake. That's right. It pertains to Kang and his other incarnations, and consider this a precursor to the Kang video that I am going to do. So for right now, we're going to talk about the Marvel crossover, but before we do, we're going to give a little bit of a prelude to the events that led to the led to the crossover in question. Check it out. Prologue. At the very end of time itself, there's only one being remaining in the entire multiverse, a man named He Who Remains. Now the end of time is the common endpoint for all the surviving timelines in the multiverse at that point. It's their final stop before the heat death of the multiverse, where everything ends and another big bang explosion occurs, creating new life, new worlds, new dimensions, etc. Now he who remains is not only the last living being in the universe, but he's also the final executive, the very last director of the Time Variance Authority, the infinitely bureaucratic cross-temporal agency which monitors every timeline in the multiverse. Living in his home, an elaborate residence set on an asteroid floating in space aptly named the Citadel at the End of Time, he wanted to give a gift to the next multiversal cycle. Utilizing the temporal energy which the TVA gathered throughout its existence, he aimed to create a trinity of hyper-evolving entities to survive into the next Big Bang. Their purpose was dual. It was to serve as bastions of temporal energy and to have the full knowledge of this multiverse and pass that knowledge onto the beings of the next universe so that they would not make the same mistakes that we did, thus living in a utopia. However, a miscalculation in his steps led to the beings that he created to being warped. They became known as the Time Twisters. They were nihilistic entities who believed that the only way that they could fulfill their purpose was by going back to the very beginning of time itself. And by doing so, they destroyed every era that they passed through, and they would have did the same thing to our era, the Marvel 616 reality, if not for the intervention of Thor and Jane Foster. After learning the Time Twister's origins, they traveled to the far future to the very end of time itself, and convinced He Who Remains to abort the Time Twisters before their creation. Now this action created one final divergence in reality at time's end. In one reality, He who remains, he created the Time Twisters without any interference. In another, he aborted them. But after he did that, he recalculated and created the more benevolent Time Keepers. Now both the Time Keepers and the Time Twisters are trios that are forever locked in a struggle to ensure that one of their groups are are to be the last beings created at the end of time. Since the Time Keepers can't interfere with time directly due to the so-called laws of time, they basically subcontract the task out to other people, custodians as they call them, to do their dirty work for them. One of those custodians was Immortus, an elderly variant of Kang the Conqueror. You see, in his old age and wanting to learn more about time, Kang sequestered himself outside of time in the dimension known as Limbo. While there, the timekeepers approached him to be their custodian, tasking him with watching over a 7,000 year period in the multiverse and pruning timelines within that period that threatened the timekeeper's existence. And in return, they were to tutor him in all things time and time related. That's when Kang the Conqueror became Immortus. One of the ways that he found that he could do his job easier to prune divergent realities in the multiverse was by pruning that reality's nexus being. A nexus what? A Nexus being is an individual who acts as a living anchor for the space-time structure of their entire timeline, unconsciously functioning as a touchstone for vast amounts of temporal energy. So if that individual is killed in that timeline before their intended death, then the timeline, universe, or reality, whatever you want to call it, that they're tethered to, it also dies with them. 
and with their destruction, a vast amount of temporal energy is released. During the issues of Avengers West Coast, issues 42 through 62, Immortus got the idea into his head to gather all that energy and pass it on to our reality's nexus being, Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch. Yeah, he was gathering that energy to make her its host. And he did. However, with the help of Agatha Harkness, Wanda rejected the temporal energy and its release was then creating a series of new paradoxical outcomes in our timeline. To remedy this, the sudden appearance of the timekeepers prevented those paradoxes and as punishment, they regathered the temporal energy and routed it into Immortus himself. However, since Immortus is not a Nexus being, he was overcome by the energies and frozen like a statue in place, powerful but immobile. The timekeepers then departed with Immortus and stored him in his home dimension of Limbo until they could figure out what to do with him later on. However, the Timekeepers discovered that Immortus had failed to eliminate four Nexus beings whose continued presence threatened their future existence. Engaging the use of other pawns within these four timelines, they sought to cause the death of these four remaining Nexus beings, never mind the fact that their deaths would destroy the multiverse itself. And this, friends, is where Timequake begins. Timequake was a five-part storyline which was phenomenally important for the Marvel Universe and took place in the second volume of What If, issues 35 through 39, released from March through July of 1992. As some of you may know, the What If stories for the majority of both runs were framed from the premise of Uatu, the Watcher, observing alternate Earths, alternate realities, dimensions, timelines, whatever you want to call them, as part of his duties as a Watcher. However, Timequake had him step out of that role and eventually take action. As stated before, the Timekeepers, they sought to preserve their existence at the end of time by arranging the deaths of four key Nexus beings of different alternate realities. However, those deaths, they would lead to the destruction of not only those realities, but ultimately all of existence throughout the multiverse. Timequake Parts 1-4 through four followed Uatu helplessly observing these four realities as the Timekeepers attempted to manipulate events to ensure the deaths of their Nexus beings. But who were those Nexus beings? Additionally, Timequake was an excuse for the writers to revisit other what-if realities that they've also covered before. For example, Part 1, that revisited Earth 772, which took place in the very first issue of the very first volume of What If. And the Nexus event there was, what if Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four? The Nexus being in that reality is Franklin Richards. Part 2, Earth 90110, which was covered in the second volume of What If in issue number 19, where what if the Vision conquered the world, and the Vision is the Nexus being. Now, the next two realities made their debut in Timequake. Earth 9250, or what if Wolverine became Lord of the Vampires? Jean Grey is their Nexus being. And Earth, 2, Earth 9260, or what if the Egyptian gods took over Asgard, where Odin was a Nexus being? Throughout parts 1 through 4, a powerful and mysterious shrouded third party calling himself the Whisperer was interfering in the Timekeeper's plot. Though his existence was unknown to the Timekeepers, he was not, he was not um, invisible to the Watcher. You see, the Watcher, all he could do was observe. So he figured, I can see the guy, I can't do anything, so fuck it, I'm not going to tell him about this guy at all. And the Whisperer, he managed to foil the Timekeeper's plot for the most part, and every time, he plucked out from that reality a pawn for later usage. For example, in Earth 772, he took Doctor Doom of that reality. In nine, Earth 90110, he took Iron Droid, Wolverine from Earth 9250, and Thor from Earth 9260. By the end of Part 4, three out of four of the Nexus beings were saved, which caused the Timekeepers to fade out of existence, and the Whisperer was revealed to be Immortus himself. Yet yeah, Immortus was still flush with all that temporal energy that the Timekeepers stuck him with, and he was nowhere near as helpless as they thought he was, and they made the foolish decision to stick him in Limbo, the very dimension that he controls thanks to their tutelage. He was able to project his astral form through time in order to foil their plot, and then steal a variant from each one of those timelines for later usage. At this point, with the Timekeepers gone, Immortus, he became a wave of temporal energy and threatened to rewrite the multiverse as he saw fit. By the conclusion in Part 5, 
the Watcher was forced to act. See, with, mult with Immortus retrofitting the multiverse's space-time continuum, all cosmic obligations and promises, including the Watcher's own oath of non-interference, were temporarily suspended, allowing him to act. And as such, he was forced to team up with the Time Variance Authority to stop the threat of Immortus. Initially, and this is a testament to how inept the TVA and the book are, they came up with several ineffective strategies to halt Immortus, such as spreading anti-Immortus slogans, leaflets, and t-shirts throughout every reality that he was infiltrating. And finally, they sent the four agents that Immortus gathered during his time as a Whisperer to assault his home base in Limbo. There, the four faced Immortus' agents, Tempest, Ramatut's robots, Space Phantoms, and the Dire Wraiths, However, at the conclusion of each battle, the Immortus wave warped events back to the status quo, causing everything to go back to how they were at the beginning. Kind of like a video game where you beat the where you beat the bad guy, but then things become like a time loop. And in this case, all of Immortus' warriors were restored and it led to some of the, his agents falling in battle. With literally little time to stop Immortus, the Watcher and the TVA's new plan was to revisit Immortus' origins, before he was Immortus, before he was Kang the Conqueror, before he was the Pharaoh Ramatut, hell, before he even made his first trip through time, back when he was a 31st century malcontent by the name of Nathaniel Richards. And mind you, this storyline was the first time we learned the real name of Kang, the Scarlet Centurion, Pharaoh, Conqueror, whatever you want to call him. The Watcher and the TVA, they sent a variant of the Fantastic Four from Earth-8212, the Reed Richards Rocket Group, where the Fantastic Four never got superpowers. They were sent and they were able to convince Nathaniel to take a serum that would make his body incompatible with temporal energy and thus preventing him from ever becoming a temporal wave. The plan worked and the Immortus wave dispersed in the present day and then the timekeepers reappeared. But moments later, a second set of timekeepers also appeared and revealed that the first ones to be their counterparts, the Time Twisters, who somehow gained dominance over the keepers and were able to manipulate Immortus to do his bidding, to his bidding and do the, and, and of their service to them. And this goes all the way back to before Avengers West Coast 42. With their ruse exposed, the Time Twisters reverted back into the nurturing pods from which they came, and the timekeepers explained that their connection tying together them, the TVA, and He Who Remains. With their regained dominance, the timekeepers thanked Uatu and the TVA, took the pods back to their citadel at the end of time. Yeah, it was a remarkably complex story, especially that last chapter, as it tied together all the aforementioned time-based entities who before now were unrelated, the TVA, He Who Remains, the timekeepers, and the time twisters. Lastly, the agents that Immortus absconded with as the Whisperer, when the, when the Immortus wave dispersed, those agents who seemingly died in limbo, they were restored back to their native timelines. Immortus, he eventually convinced the timekeepers to reinstate him as the, one of their custodians, but their continued pressure to eliminate realities that threatened their existence, namely where humanity ascends to traveling through space and the Avengers gain prominence, that led to the events of the Destiny War, which took place in the aforementioned Avengers Forever series, issues 1 through 12. Props to Kurt Busiek and um, RIP to Carlos Pacheco. Some key differences in the MCU. The Timekeepers are real in the comics, but in the MCU, they're androids that serve as propaganda and figureheads for the TVA. It's a damn shame that's all they are, because in the comics, and this is rarely ever talked about, the TVA, they created the Timekeepers using all their temporal energy, energy that they use for their retired employees as quality of life purposes. So the Timekeepers are really just living embodiments of the TVA's pension plan. The Time Variance Authority, they're more fleshed out in the MCU than they are in the book. I mean, in the, in the TV show, Loki, they're not treated as a tongue-in-cheek joke. In the book, they're more of a parody of Marvel's editorial structure, which is why they're not taken as seriously. And lastly, in the MCU, even though we know that Kang and Immortus are separate people, Immortus being Kang's inevitable self, in the MCU, they're treated as variants of one another, warring against one another. And they also merged Immortus, his home dimension of Limbo, and his resident castle with He Who Remains, he who remains home at the end of time and the citadel at the end of time respectively into this 
All right, folks, that's Time Quake for you guys. And seriously, I am doing a video on Kang, Immortus, Ramatut, his origin, and all those other temporal cells. It's gonna take a little while, so step back to me in two weeks. Come back in two weeks after the Ant-Man movie ends. I wanna see how they do with that before I give something definitive and comparative. Until, sh until then, Shaq Housers, I will see you then. Have a good week. Later. Mansion, apartment. Shack house. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>